to you. I can play capoeira. Whoa, we said, said that at the same time. Huh, we, we said that at the same time as well. Is he doing this on purpose? And we thought that at the same time? And we said this at the same time? Uh -huh. oh, guess not. Sorry about that. Welcome to I Can Play Capoeira, a six part oh, video. Capoeira. A six part video. what, huh? Capoeira. Ash, you know what capoeira is, you've done it for like a thousand years. Yeah, but I'm just trying to help the people watching and you don't know what it is yet. Oh, got ya. Good point. We should probably explain what it is and introduce ourselves. So, for those of you that don't know, let me tell you a bit about capoeira. Capoeira is an Afro-Brazilian art form. It looks a bit like dancing, a bit like acrobatics, and a bit like martial arts. But really, it's all of these things. Capoeira is a physical movement game using kicks, dodges, and acrobatics. When we do capoeira, we say we are playing, and it's up to you how you play the game. Usually, two people play together. But you can also practice alone, and create a capoeira flow that feels fun to do. The videos are designed for absolute beginners or people who have recently discovered capoeira. The movements are suitable for everyone, no matter your age or ability. Parents and adults are encouraged to join in. Don't worry if your movements don't look exactly like ours. Everyone brings something different to capoeira, themselves. So just enjoy the movements and go at your own pace. There are six videos, which we suggest watching over the course of six weeks, allowing for time to practice between each video. However, this is just a suggestion and you can go at your own pace. Maybe you want to learn lots of powerful Power. kicks. Kick. Maybe you want to learn lots of beautiful acrobatic movements. I can move like water, flowing, dripping, splashing, plotting. Maybe you want to create a fun sequence with friends or family. Or just stay fit and healthy. The exercises in this video are suitable for everyone and will help improve balance, core strength, musicality, rhythm, stamina, language, flexibility, and the list goes on. We're really excited to have you here, seeing as this is our first class together. Uh, let's get to know each other a bit better. My name's Joe. I love basketball. Slam dunking's my speciality. I also really love dancing. Let's see what Joe's up to. Joe! Get out! And I love photography. Give me some attitude. More attitude? Let's get that attitude. Let's get some attitude in this shot. Okay, that's way too much attitude. Let's tone it down a bit. My name is Ashley. Hold still, Joe. I'm trying to concentrate. I love drawing. Yes, finally. Is this really how the world sees me? You can often find me. Relaxing with my guitar. I wanna be in that countryside. I wanna be in that countryside. I wanna be And I'm always trying to keep fit. That was a bit about me and Ashley. If you've got the activity book, why not write a bit about yourself as well? We are very nearly ready to start. First we just need to do a quick vibe check to make sure we're all prepared. Vibe check? What? First, let's check the vibe of what you're wearing. Ash, what have you got on? Hmm. Well, it's quite a funky style, Ash. What you had on before was better. I'm wearing this. I didn't put this on. Make sure you wear clothes that are suitable for exercise and that you can move around in easily. I'll sort that out for you, Ash. Wear a loose fitting t-shirt and trousers that are comfortable to move in. Make sure you remove any jewellery and if you have long hair, then tie it up. Bare feet or plimsolls are good for footwear. Nothing too chunky. Next vibe check, let's check our room space. Make sure any furniture is out of the way so you're not going to bash into anything. Okay, Ash, let's get rid of some of this furniture. If you're in a garden, great. Just watch out for trees. 
I'm done here. See you next time. Vibe Checker, out. Oh, thanks Vibe Checker, pretty handy. Uh, see you next time. <laughs> Joe, that was just you dressed up. No, I'm pretty sure that's the Vibe Checker. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, yeah. Before we get started with our first class, I want to run through a few things with you about the videos. If on your screen it says watch, that means that we want you to watch what we're doing, pay attention to the details, and try to really understand the shapes, the balance, and the movements before trying. If it says copy, then we want you to try your best to copy what we're doing. Just try and go at the same time as us. Let's have a quick test. If I raise this hand, it should be like you're looking in a mirror. So you raise the same side hand. This is my left hand, but you should be lifting your right hand. Try and copy me as best you can. I am a robot. Good, probably. I don't know. I can't see you, but I imagine you did it okay. At some points in the video, we'll be doing movements on our hands, but we'll still need to see the screen. We'll be upside down at these points, so look out for these words and you should be able to read them. Look out for Coach Countdown, who's here to help with your timing and also number of repetitions. Okay, so we're going to begin with a warm-up, a game called the Beans Game. I say a type of bean and you have to be that bean. This is really important to get our bodies ready for movement and exercise. So if I say run a bean, then you run it on the spot. If I say string bean, you become a string bean. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay, get ready to copy. And what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> Just looking at me. <laughs> Let's begin. Get ready to coffee. Let's start with run a bean. Good. String bean. Stringiest string bean you've ever been. Go on to tiptoes. Stretch your arms up. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Good. Run a bean. Okay, check your space for this one. Make sure you're not going to hit anyone. Let's do broad bean. Broad as you've ever been. Stretch, stretch your legs, stretch everything. Good. Let's put one hand to the opposite side foot. Whoa, stretch. Ah, good. The other hand to the other side foot. Stretch. Good. From broad bean, let's go to string bean. To broad bean. String bean, to broad bean. String bean, broad bean, string bean, broad bean, string bean, broad bean, string bean, broad bean, string bean, good. Let's do jumping bean. Good. Let's try jelly bean. Jelly jumping bean. Jelly runner bean. Done. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to work through our body jelly style. Let's start with jelly body. Good. Jelly head. Jelly neck. Good. Jelly shoulders. Cool. Arms up. Make sure you're not going to hit anyone else. Both arms forwards. One, two, one, two. Both arms backwards. Two, one, two, one. Good. Jelly wrists. Jelly elbows. Just the elbows. Like you're a propeller plane. Like you're a propeller plane. And hands on your hips. Biggest hula hoop in the world. Forwards and backwards and backwards and forwards. Great. Feet together. Knees together, hands on your knees, and make some circles. J 
jelly ankle. Jelly other ankle. Ooh, don't know about you, but I'm pretty warm now. How about you, Ash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm warm. Yeah. Ooh. If you ever need to take a break, drink some water, just put us on pause and go and grab yourself. A cup of water trick to you. <laughs> but seriously, stay hydrated. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Challenge zone. I, Ashley, challenge you. Do you accept the challenge? Okay, the first challenge. Very simple. Lie down on the floor and then stand back up in any way you like. Pretty simple. But they're gonna get harder, so get ready. Why not give it a try? You've got 10 seconds. Okay, challenge two. This time, I want you to lie down on the floor and stand back up, but the rule is only one hand can touch the ground. Now it's your go. You've got 10 seconds. Do your best. We're going to test our balance now. Let's get balancey. Balance number one. Let's see how Ashley does it. You lift your knee in front of you and then move your leg out to the side. Extend your leg so it's straight and point your toes upwards. This is the shape we want to hold. You see how straight Ashley's leg is and how he uses his arms to help himself balance. Tips from the top. Good stuff, Ashley. Here's a look from the side. Okay, great. Let's get ready to copy. We're going to start with the right leg. We're going to hold this balance for five seconds. Off you go. Nice. Okay, let's do the left leg now. Five seconds. Here we go. Good stuff. Awesome guys. Let's move on to balance number two. Balance number two, you lift your knee in front of you, but you don't move your leg out to the side. Instead, you extend your leg in front of you and point the toes up to the ceiling or the sky if you're outside. Let's see from the side. Ashley lifts his leg and extends it straight and forwards using his arms to help himself balance. Okay, get ready to copy. Let's start with the right leg again. Lift your knee, extend the leg out straight and point the toes upwards. Hold this for five seconds, off you go. Oh, keep your balance, Ash. Just about made it, well done. Let's try the other leg now, your left leg. Lift the knee, extend your leg out in front of you and point the toes upwards. Good. Nice. Okay, last balance shape. Good evening, this is CCNN. My name is Daily Ford Knightley, and this evening we have a special report on flat hands. Our roving reporter, Stephanie Inson, is on the scene. Stefan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Daily. It's Ian Stevenson. My sources are telling me that whenever we put our hands to the floor in Capoeira, we have them flat with fingers spread. This is the perfect example. See how the fingers are spread, the palms flat. This one, not so good. Even worse. OK, 
Hayes at the end, Stefan. Flat hands. Thank you. Flat hands, everybody. <laughs> See you next week. Oh, thanks for that, CCNN crew. So, like they said, we need to have flat hands when doing this balance. Watch how to do balance number three. Ashley puts his hands on the floor, flat. He lifts one leg up, making sure it's straight. Then he tucks his head under and through, ensuring that he can see his foot that is in the air. That was from the side view. If you do it facing the screen, then you'll be upside down, which can be a bit confusing. So maybe do it from the side this time. Watch from this view. Ashley puts his hands on the floor, spreads his fingers, tucks his head through, and points his legs straight. He holds that shape. Okay, let's give it a try. When we try, we're going to try from the side view. Turn the same way as Ashley so you're facing the same way, and lift your right leg. Flat hands on the floor, head tucked under. Let's hold that for five seconds. Nice. Okay, let's face the opposite way. So your left leg is going to balance this time. Flat hands on the floor, head tucked under, straight leg at the back. Hold that shape. Very good. Nice. Give yourself a little jiggly woof. <laughs> In capoeira, often we use animal shapes to help us move around or help us dodge. We're going to introduce those animal shapes to you now. No. No. <laughs> We're going to do the first animal shape now, which we call frog. We start by putting our hands on our head, and then you bend your knees until you come all the way down to a resting position. Try to keep your feet flat on the ground. If you can't keep them flat, then you can place one hand behind you on the ground to help keep your balance. So, when I do frog, I ensure that I can still see what's going on and that I can stand up and then dodge again easily. Let's have a look from the side. Joe puts his hands up over his head to protect. Great, nice one Joe. He's got his arms up. He's looking. Okay, get ready to copy. Here's Ashley. Double thumbs up. Nice, Ash. Awesome. We're going to try this frog shape five times. Hands on your head and bend your knees until you come to a resting position. Then back up. And again. Hands on your head, bend your knees. Frog. Frog. It's frog time. Cool. Let's try our second animal shape. We call it spider. Here's me, Joe. I go into my frog shape to begin with, and then I place both of my hands directly behind me, and I hold myself up. I keep my hips high, and I don't sit on the floor. In this shape, I can balance one leg, the other leg, one arm, the other arm. I can also do one arm and one leg. When I do this, I do the opposite sides to help myself balance. Let's take a look from the side view. I start in frog with flat feet and then I put my hands behind. I lift my hips. I'm not sitting on the floor here. I can balance all of my limbs. Aren't I great? Look at me balance. I look like I'm dancing. Then I move back into frog and I stand up. Okay everybody, get ready to copy. First we're going to put our hands on our head and go down into our frog shape. Then one hand, two hands back. Alright. Good, don't let your hips drop. Keep them up. Let's raise one hand, the other hand. Now back to frog and stand up. Good. 
Okay, let's go down again. One hand, then the other. Now this time, let's lift the leg, the other leg, back to frog and stand up. Okay, now let's go down. One hand, two hands. This time we're gonna lift opposite hand and foot. Opposite hand and foot. Good, keeping those hips up. Nice. Okay, let's go down into the frog again. One hand, two hands. Now let's try and walk to the right. A few steps to the left. Come back to the middle. And stand up. Back to the standing position. <laughs> okay, let's go down to frog again. This time we're going to try a whole circle spin. Okay, and then stand up. Well done everybody, you're done. Great, so let's have a look at what Joe's going to do next. He's going to do an animal shape that we call cat. He's going to make sure his hands are flat. Great, so he's going to do the first two animal shapes, which is frog, then he goes to spider. Now watch what he does, he's going to point over his head, he's going to step the same leg as arm across, look through his legs, and he's going to check he can balance by lifting his hands off the floor, giving us a wave. Nice one, Joe. Okay, he's going to go the other way, moving through the first two animal shapes and stepping across this time to your left. Okay, side view. Frog, one, two with the hands. Now watch the arm reaches over his head and he's looking through his legs there and he can balance without the hands as well. Excellent. Okay, let's get ready to copy. We're gonna go through the cat shape five times. Let's move with Ashley. First, we start with frog, then we put our hands behind us so that we are in spider shape. Point over your head the same way as Ashley, so you're gonna be pointing right. Then you step, and you should be able to see Ashley through your legs, upside down. Pretty crazy. Okay, let's try again. Frog, spider, this time point over your head to the left. Look through your legs, give Ashley a wave, he gets lonely. Let's do this three more times. No wave that time. Point over your head, step, Look through, double wave, awesome. Frog, spider, point over the head and step. Another double wave. Cheers, Ashley. Thumbs up to you. Let's celebrate. What we're going to learn now is something called the monkey jump. Ook, ook. <laughs> it's similar to a cartwheel. So we start off small, but with practice, it can grow into big cartwheels, one-handed cartwheels, and even no-handed cartwheels. Cool. We're going to learn monkey jump through different levels. Let's start at level one. Good place to start. Let's watch Ashley. He's going to turn around. When we copy, you'll be facing away from the video screen, but you should be able to see it through your arms, upside down. He places his hands on the floor, flat, then he balances one leg in the air, and he tries to hop from one leg to the other. He's trying to make as little noise as possible, and land as softly as possible. He's not looking at the floor. He's trying to watch his feet that are in the air. Okay, we're going to try this together. So, start by turning around and placing your hands on the floor. You should be able to see the screen through your legs. Look out for these words. You should be able to read them. We're going to try hopping from one leg to the other ten times. When you hop, your legs should just go straight up and down, not landing heavily. Make sure you're not just bending at the knees. Move the whole leg into the air. Don't jump too high or overbalance. Just go at your own pace and set your own level. Okay, off we go.
For level 2, it would be handy if you had a pillow or a jumper or a cushion, something that you can hop over that's soft. If you haven't got one to hand, press pause and go and find one now. Here's one for Ashley, whoops! So, let's watch what we have to do. We're going to place the pillow on the floor to our side. And we're going to stand, facing away from the screen so that we can see through our arms, like before. Then, the leg that's closest to the pillow is going to hop over first. Ashley hops from one side to the other. Notice how the leg that is closest is the one that's in the air, and it's the one that he lands on first. Okay, let's give this a try. Place your pillow on the floor, turn around, make sure you can see the screen, and we're going to try hopping from one side to the other ten times. Off you go. Nice one, awesome, well done. Okay, next level. This time we're going to combine the animal shapes that we just learned with this kind of jumping movement. Watch Ashley, he starts in frog, he moves into spider, and now he steps to cat, but he does the cat shape in the air, over the pillow. He then moves back to frog and stands up. Okay, watch again. He goes to his frog shape, moves into spider, and then turns towards the pillow. He then hops one leg over and then the other, landing back in spider shape, up to frog and standing. Okay, let's try and do this. So we're gonna try this a few times with Ashley. We're gonna copy him as he moves. Your pillow should be on your right. Move into frog, spider, turn for cat, and then hop over your pillow. And back to standing up through the animal shape. Let's do this another four times. Go into frog, spider, turn with Ashley and hop. Let's try one last time. Frog, spider, turn and hop. Awesome. Well done guys, not easy. Okay, for the last level of monkey jump, we're going to use something that we call the monkey balance. It looks similar to frog, but it's slightly different. To get into the monkey balance, we stretch our arms up into the sky, go onto tiptoes, and then slowly lower ourselves down. When we come to a resting position, we should be on tiptoes still, a bit more buoyant and bouncy than in frog. Look from the side. Ashley goes onto tiptoes, stretches his arms upwards, and then lowers himself down to a resting position, remaining on tiptoes. From here, what we will do is we'll move through the monkey jump. To do this, we put our hands to the side and hop as though stepping for cat. Let's see how it works with the pillow. Now Ashley's fetched his pillow, he goes into his balance, tiptoes, arms stretched, lowers himself, and watch, it's just like going into the cat shape. He steps one, and two. In the middle, he was upside down. Now he's the other side of the pillow. Watch again. He stretches his arms, goes onto tiptoes, puts flat hands next to him, and reaches over. So he's doing a big step over the pillow. Sweet. Don't worry if you can't quite do this yet. Give it your best shot. And if you can't do as many as Ashley, that's okay as well. Let's get ready to copy Ashley. We're going to do five of these monkey jumps. Start with the pillow on your right. Arm stretch, tiptoes, lower yourself. Try and move at the same time as Ashley. Don't worry if you can't keep up, just do your best.
We'll be practicing this each week, so there's plenty of room for improvement. If you haven't got it right away, don't be disheartened. No one gets it first time. Unless you did. <laughs> then you... <laughs> nice one. Capoeira has a stance, just like in some martial arts, like boxing, you might stand like this. Karate, you might stand like this. We don't know, because we don't do either of those. But we play capoeira, so we're going to show you the capoeira stance. It's called jinga, and it means to swing or to sway. And it looks like this. We face each other, we try to move at a similar speed, like this. We're going to learn this now. No. Let's learn Jinga. Here's me, Joe. Let me just adjust my glasses a bit. Ah, that's better. So for Jinga, we're going to be moving around. So check your space and make sure there's nothing behind you because we're going to be stepping backwards. Your legs should be slightly bent with soft knees. Now it might help you to imagine that you're standing on a triangle. In this position, your feet are at the base of the triangle. So we'll call this position base. Now, imagine that the point of the triangle is behind you. You're going to step backwards onto the point of the triangle with each leg. Back onto tiptoes. When we step one leg backwards, it then returns to its original position. The leg at the back does not cross the other leg. It goes straight backwards. It then returns to its original position on base. When we step our left leg backwards, let's call that position one. So we move one and two and one and two. Base. Okay, let's have a look from the side. So I'm standing in my base position with soft knees. I can shift my weight. I'm going to move to position one. My heel doesn't touch the floor. I make sure that I'm still facing forward with toes on the floor. Then I step to base and position two. And one. And two. And that's it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try Jinga together. Let's start in our base position. We're gonna start with the left leg. Position one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and one and nice and nice. Awesome guys. If you're struggling with this, then rewind a bit and try again. Remember, the leg goes behind you and you're always stepping back to our base position. Okay, nice. That was the basic Jinga step, but now we're gonna add in what our arms do. So whatever leg is going backwards, the same side arm comes up as a kind of protection, as a shield. Watch as I step back my right leg, my right arm comes up. It's the same side arm as leg. It just lifts up with elbow kind of in front of the face. <laughs> You should still be able to see. So it might help if you imagine that I'm holding a giant ball. Oh, that's handy. Good imagination. As I move, I'm carrying the ball from one side to the other. Notice how the same side arm as leg comes up in front of me. Okay, now let's take the ball away. Whoa, really good imagination. See without the ball how the arm comes up. Watch how it works with a partner. If you have a partner, you can practice Jinga with them. 
you're going to move at the same speed as them. The same side leg should be going backwards. Don't rush ahead and move out of time. Try and move in sync with your partner. It should be like looking in a mirror. Just a slightly different looking mirror, that's all. We're going to try this together. Move in time with me at the same speed. We'll start in our base position and we're going to move our left leg first. So, let's move our left leg behind us and our left arm in front of us. Position one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. Rewind, Rewind selector. selector. Let's try that again, but this time with triangle vision. Jinga is an essential part of capoeira. It acts as a bridge between all of our other movements. Well done guys, it's not easy, quite confusing, but with practice, you'll get it. Here's Ashley. We're going to try combining our Jinga with our animal movements. So to do this, we start in our base position with soft knees. You move to position one and two and one and two. Then we get to base again. From here, we're gonna move into a frog he puts his hands behind him for spider and turns one way for cat and then stands up. Let's see that again. He moves one and two and one and two. He stops in his base, moves to frog. His hands go behind him. He points the other way this time into cat and stands up, ready to move again. He moves into frog when he's at base. His hands go behind him and he points one way and steps into cat. Then he's ready to move again. You don't have to go as fast as Ashley, he's done it for years, so just go at your own speed. So this is how it looks with a partner. You move at the same speed through Jinga. Then, when you're ready, you move into frog, spider, and move the same way as your partner. You should be able to see them throughout the movements. Me and Ashley have been doing it for years, so don't worry if you're not as quick as us. Move with Jinga, frog, spider, step to cat, then back to Jinga. Okay, we're gonna give this a go. Okay, everybody, let's get ready to do Jinga. Left leg first. One, and two, and three, and four. Okay, let's go. Base, frog. One hands, two hands for spider, roll over to cat. Now let's stand up, ready to start with your right leg. One, and two, and three, and four. Great, straight down to frog, spider. To your left for cat, stand up, and left leg. One, and two, and three, and four. Lovely, frog, down to spider, Roll to your right for cat, stand up and right leg. One and two and three and four. Frog, spider, roll to your left, stand up. Left leg, one and two and three and four. Frog, spider, roll to your right, stand up. Face the front. Well done, everybody. <laughs> Hello, my name is Professor Feliz. I'm a capoeira professor. I have some work for you to do before the video next week. You must practice these things. The three balance shapes.
the three animal shapes. And Jinga. Okay, everybody. Bye bye. See you next week. Hey. Yes. yes. It's the end of the first episode. Well done. Yes, well done. We hope you've had fun. Me and Ashley, we've had fun making it. Mm, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, it feels like we started this video maybe two months ago. <sighs> anyway, don't forget to do what Professor Feliz has uh, mm -hmm. told you to practice. Homework. Before starting the next video, okay? Um, and we'll catch you next, next time. time. Next time. <laughs>